You're listening to DC On Screen. On this episode, we are talking about the totally messed up shit that Leto's Joker did to Robin in the Snyderverse, the new DC Comics EIC, and answering your questions. All that and who the hell knows what else after this message for, I don't know, insurance or mattresses. Yeah, that. (laughs) We don't know. Welcome into DC on Screen episode 618. This is the podcast where we talk about the DC Comics multiverse on film and television, give honest opinions on projects upcoming and past, and believe that every version of a property is valid, even if we really don't want it to be. If it's been released, it is fair game, so beware of spoilers, and welcome to the show. I'm David C. Robertson, and this, the useful wicker basket who won't help my unsuspecting people of Pompeii, Jason Goss. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but Wicker don't stand up to lava. No. <laughs> no. No, no. Doesn't even make a good fossil. She no. Just, she just goes up in flame. <laughs> Have I mentioned that something I like about the intro as it normally is, is the part where you're like, even if you don't want it to be, and I, I always feel like you're tipping your hand a little bit about something that's <laughs> something that's coming up. Yeah. No, I don't I don't mean to. I uh, this or um, I don't think I am. I'll be honest. The only thing I, <laughs> the only thing I ever think about is Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> is that just a trigger moment for you? Yeah, I mean, it's not even like, it's not even all of Nolan's trilogy. It's just Dark Knight Rises. Just yeah, just that last like thirty five percent of it. Um, but sometimes it seems like you say it pretty neutrally, like like uh, yeah, even if even if we don't want him to be and blah blah blah, like. Uh, you know, almost almost like an announcer voice kind of thing. Like you keep the same mm-hmm. tone, and then every now and then you're like, even if we don't want it to be, <laughs> I never know what I'm going to do. Man. <laughs> it just has a very different, I don't know, has a different different feel. And sometimes, you know, depending on where I am with the week too, sometimes I'll I'll hear you and I think I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, I I think I know what you were getting at. And other times I'm, I'm I'm every now and then I'll hear you say something. You're like, even if I don't want it to be, and I'm like, oh shit, I didn't hear anything. What? Whew, what am I in for? Yeah, no, I because <laughs> as is the natural pattern of the show, I only know about fifty percent of what you're going to say as it happens. Yeah, see, I rarely, I, I don't know, I rarely have a really negative reaction to anything that's coming up. Mm-hmm. We're too jaded I, I, for that now. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I sort of just kind of feel like I'm willing to give it a chance, and I don't know that that's jaded. That might be. Well, I guess in some ways, maybe. I don't know. It's like jaded optimism. Is that is that a thing? Or just resigned to, you know, because the thing that I have to understand and I have to, I think a lot of fans don't understand is I, I, I'm not making these movies. I'm not making these shows. Yeah. Yeah. My vision is not seen on the screen. Yeah. So I've got to get over that and go, nobody, this is somebody else's thing. Well, this is, it is what it is. And I appreciate it to <laughs> this amount or, or not. Right. So. But the one thing I do know I don't like is Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> and that's... <laughs> Occasionally, it is like Batman and Harley Quinn sneak in. Yeah, that's the thing. Batman Batman and Harley Quinn. Yeah, that that's a great example. I'll even take... I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to because it's true. I just realized I would take Dark Knight Rises over Batman and Harley Quinn. Yeah, I saw where you were going with that, and I did my own little... Uh... A little tabulation. Yeah. I uh, tried to run the figures for myself. I uh, did a little bit of checks and balances, and I think I'm on the same side with you. Yeah. I think if I had to yeah. pick one that I was never going to have to watch again, it would have to be Bar- Batman or Harley Quinn. Oh, I mean, you know, I'm not going to probably watch either one of them for a long time. But. <laughs> yeah. There's that. Too. It came, for me, it came down to did Dark Knight Rises have a very long sequence that was nothing but someone farting in the back of the Batmobile? No. Like, unless, no, unless it was like a, a silent situation and they just never addressed it, no. Well, I, Dad, I don't know about all that. Yeah, that could be some somebody's headcanon that I think just shouldn't be there. That's Schrodinger's fart, man. I yeah. don't know about all that. Yeah, we, <laughs> we can thankfully leave that behind into the area of, of useless speculation. But, uh-huh. but definitely an audible, unfortunate situation, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, I can bail on that entirely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So... Or what was it? Uh, four and a half minutes of uh, of like weird, uh, kind of vaguely stripping uh, dance action in a. I don't know. It's hard to describe. I, get, uh, I don't remember the stripping. It's not stripping. It's it's like uh, 
I remember her stripping and like, then, like sexualized like, uh, dancing in a bar. Yeah, I don't even remember that. I remember her being at the bar and there being like a punk number or something, and that was not terrible. Like her her portion of it. Yeah, it's but, been so long. Maybe I remember that m- remembering that incorrectly. I could have sworn it was uh, it was one of those moments where I'm like, Bruce, man, just just have these moments in your private time. Bruce Tim, I should say, actually. Now that I, right, right. Now that I've said that out now, loud. I thought there was the, I mean, there was the thing where she, you know, strips down and has sex with, with uh, Nightwing, who is all, like, tied up to the bed. There was that. Yeah, there was that. <sighs> well, this has been a weird sidebar of condemnation. That, uh, no. But, you know. It's going to be one of and, those anyway. Yes, it is. It is a weird episode. But look, man, I'm going to say this about Dark Knight Rises. Then we can move on. <laughs> Harley Quinn the animated series has legitimized Dark Knight Rises for me in in such a way because Dark Knight Rises gave birth to that version of Bane. Yeah. Yeah. Without that, we don't get that Harley Quinn version of Bane. And that's just, that's too priceless to me now. It's yeah. precious. It is. It's fantastic. So. And still yeah. overall, yeah. it's, it's, it, it was not my favorite thing by any stretch, but it's, there, there was, there was good stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, there's some good stuff in Dark Knight Rises. Sure. We should maybe just do that one day as a ep- separate episode. Like, after we spent what I feel like was probably four and a half, five hours bashing it. <laughs> I don't think it was that long. It felt like right. it. <laughs> uh, and yet, for us, that the, the time felt like moments. Maybe we should just go back and do, like, a here's what we actually did like about it kind of thing. Yeah, maybe. maybe I mean, I think, we did, I think we did that on the show, but... Hell, who knows? It was so long ago. It was like five years ago. It's been forever since I watched it. I'd be curious about my take now. Yeah. We have gone soft, as they say. Mm -hmm. Flaccid. Yeah. (laughs) There's things. I'd still be like, yeah, he went too far with the voice. Or, yeah, that should have caused sepsis and Jim should be dead. There's stuff I'd still be like, no. But I feel like there's probably... I think I'd be more positive if I watched it right now. But it's been three years since I watched that movie. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been five years. Actually, it's been five. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't watched it since we reviewed it. Yeah. God, it's been half a decade. That's right. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to go back. We'll see. If I go back, I'm going to have to watch the whole trilogy again. And we've got like 70 days till the CW premiere. So I've, I've, you know, theoretically have time to go back and, you know, get some reading done and watch things that I haven't had to watch for a while. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) So did you, have you, did you see anything about this, this Joe is, uh, Jared Leto's Joker and how he killed Robin? Nope. Okay. I always assumed it was a crowbar based on, you know, the images he was tweeting at the time. I, I have no confirmation on the crowbar. Mm-hmm. Um, but what do you have? Um, this guy that's going by Agent Brown, Doug Stewart. He's a um, costume designer. Mm-hmm. And three years ago, he posted some of this. And then he posted some, like it looked like five days ago uh, from now. But anyway, uh, he had a picture of uh, one, of, one of Robin's gauntlets from BVS. Mm-hmm. And was talking about, uh, oh gosh, where, where is it at now? Oh, he says, a bit of detail on Robin's gauntlet. He was brutally murdered and then set ablaze by the Joker. The story had to be told in the salvaged costume on display inside the Batcave. Aging and specialty distressing needs to tell these unscripted tales that support the main framework of the film. Here we had to create a Robin suit in a matter of days, using what we had and then figure out how to modify it as well as building the support interior. It was a lot of fun, mm-hmm. but you know, the big, the big thing is he was brutally murdered and then set ablaze by the Joker. Hmm. He was throw, he was caught on fire. Like throw him, threw him on fire. Yeah. How, how did you say that? <laughs> set um, a light. <laughs> that dude got Salem. No, that's, <laughs> they weren't, he lied. No, they were hanging the in Salem. It wasn't, it was a, uh... Whatever other, it, well, the rest of the witch trials where they just mm-hmm. burned him instead. So, and yeah, you can see some, some, some burns there on the suit. And he talked about it a little, a little more, not, he talked about the suit, uh, started talking about cannibalizing the stunt bat suit, snipped, nipped, trimmed and tucked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said a Robin suit was in there, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, that's the big, that's the big headline is like, oh shit, Joker burned him. Um, so then we have Shay Lonsdale. I think this looks like it's on Twitter, maybe who said, uh, who posted a picture of the Robin suit and then a pose, a, a picture of Wayne Manor in the distance. It said, if Zach and David stick with the story of having Joker brutally beat Robin to death, then set his body on fire. Then there's no doubt in my mind that it happened in Wayne Manor and the fire is what left the house looking like that. 
Another uh, another thing to think about mm. with this, if true, is that Joker probably knows Batman's true identity, but chooses to keep it a secret as he doesn't want his twisted back and forth relationship with Batsy to end. Um, and I, I love all that. Absolutely. It's, fantastic. it's all fantastic. Also, all fantastic. Like, like Joker War made great use of that mechanism here recently. Mm-hmm. That was, I mean, that was the big gag at the beginning was like, what if this entire time I, I knew his identity, but I just didn't want to pull the trigger because it wouldn't take the fun out of it. But what if I came up with a better? Oh, wait, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And, and this person named James on Vero looks like uh, took screenshots of it and posted it on Vero and said, would it be, would be interesting to see this? By the way, James, he's got that. He's got uh, as his avatar, that great image from the anatomy of a superhero book. Oh God. I love of, that thing. Of the, the Da Vinci Superman. The da Vinci Superman. Oh, yes. God, it's gorgeous. The whole book's gorgeous. Can't remember. <laughs> right, cannot is. recommend that book enough. I I have not finished it because I didn't want it to be over. Occasionally, I'll just go through and read a few pages, like soaking it up. It's so much fun. Yeah. So James said, "Would it be interesting to see this?" And of course, Snyder liked it. Nice. So you know, we that doesn't mean necessarily that's what happened, but that's a really cool theory. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't be sad about that at all. No. Yeah. That'd be cool. It's kind of I mean, fun every once in a while when like fan speculation, the, you know, the authors have said thing like, you know what? That's actually pretty cool. Canon. It doesn't, doesn't No, that, that fits. <laughs> it's cool. Let's go with that. Mm-hmm. That is officially Canon now. That's officially Canon. Yeah. No, uh, I have a really hard time. Like my brain, and this is going back to like fan entitlement shit mm-hmm. a little bit, not even really fan entitlement, just preconceptions. Uh, yeah. It is really hard for me. To like overwrite that part of my brain that says Zach killed Richard. Zach, yeah, like I, or he killed Jason Todd. Like my brain was, no, no, it was, it was Dick. It was Dick. Stop <laughs> thinking it was Jason Todd. Dave, you're an idiot. Yeah, I get that. I mean, because in, you know, in my head and in my soul, I'm our like, entire Jason lifetime Todd almost, it's been Jason Todd. Jason Todd died. Jason Todd died. Yeah. Joker killed Jason Todd. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you chose differently on the recent DVD. Yeah. So. What year was that though? It was like 80. I want to say it was 86. Just top of my head. My first guess. I, I do think it was 86. So that's literally been the, the like our cognitive lifetimes. We'll call it that. Since the moment yeah. we could conceive of the letters that would form the idea of Batman. Jason Todd has been one dead motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. So. And, you know, Dick's still going. I mean, they in the books, they toyed with that for a second here recently. To uh, Too much. Uh, what's the word I want here? Um, I want to say consternation. Too many arguments. Um, mm-hmm. It was a divisive <laughs> decision. Talk about Rick Grayson. I am. I don't like Rick Grayson. Old memorialist Dick. I, and, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I'm not against it mm-hmm. necessarily. Uh I, th- I feel like if there is, if we're doing like an alternate universe tale or something, but I get super aggravated. It's a thing. It's, it's, it's been a thing since I was a kid. Um, I get really aggravated when they do any kind of story. It's just like, we know that they're going to bring him back. Mm-hmm. But for now, here's a long drawn out piece of crap story about how he's a different guy for a minute. And it, it's, it feels so disingenuous. I do get that. You have to you have to buy it as part of the premise of com- comics in general. Mm-hmm. But I do get also that when it gets too specific, it it gets frustrating, like frustrating in a way. Yeah, it's it's just it's just a weird thing. And but you know, you know been, I always like, it's been pretty well appropriated as canon for the most part. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know the fine points of Rick Nightwing was an omnipolist, but um, the issue where the, the you know the gunshot happened was part of the Batman storyline. So or, uh, the Batman series. No, you know, maybe I was, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe it was like a Nightwing issue that leaked over. But anyway, um, that was a fun moment. I mean, it was actually a really good issue. It had this, uh, I thought it was a fun issue because it was a really nice, like, walk down memory lane of uh, their relationship. And it did lead to a really satisfying beatdown of KG Beast later. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bruce just, Bruce leaves him, it's, it's that line about like, um, uh, you know, this is a, uh, what does he say? Like, um, this is the opera, my operating table and I'm the surgeon. Yeah. That's I think from the, uh, Returns. animated series, animated series, uh, dark Knight Returns segment, the legends of the dark Knight. Yeah. Episode. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if he actually, I don't think he actually says it in the book. Right. But he, 
he, he leaves the guy like so close to death that Bruce is certain he will survive, but that but that it will be absolutely agonizing. And it was actually really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Made for a fun couple issues. Made for a fun uh, segment. But they have fully incorporated it now. Dick's back, baby. But he's yeah. his memory's still a bit fuzzy. And oh, while we're having this conversation, I just totally thought like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool? They're doing all these dark Batman, and we've got the Robin King. Wouldn't it be great if one of the dark multiverse Batman? <laughs> there was a bit where Batman had like basically taken over the Earth and was a king. And then Nightwing murdered him and calls himself the Night King. Mm-hmm. That would just be badass. Yeah, I could live with that. <laughs> like the only thing stopping it is that in almost every version of the the Metal Batman series, mm-hmm. uh, dude, Batman wins. He just constantly wins. Like it's the it's the major takeaway of the the Batman who laughs and you know now what is Darkest Night is I'm not going to give. This shouldn't be a spoiler exactly if you're not reading, but um, more like a theme that they're hitting is that like when you take everything away and all Bruce Wayne wants to do is win, it's frightening Mm -hmm. because all they did was take away everything other than his drive to win and then just kind of give him uh, in some versions. It's, you know, the the powers of this or that or whoever. In other versions, it's just it's just him. And, uh, you know, what if this small change in the timeline happened? And I mean, one of the recent ones was like uh, the Mindhunter. Uh, Yeah. Oh, just oh fuck well i can i can make that work i can make that work you could say that you know well number one dick has been batman and in, in, at times mm-hmm. and but a great one two yeah and a great one but two there could be like a storyline where uh the way they could do it would be the great tragedy of night king is that bruce's greatest victory was making him making dick turn become like him mm-hmm. just just no, like it, they no. do it in the titans yep that actually, and thematically, that would match a few things that have shown up in the Metal series. So, yeah, you could totally sell that to me. Yeah. So, I, I would be you know, completely into this idea. I'm rooting for you. Get in touch with Scott Snyder. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> well, it tag was in, Scott Snyder. For, <laughs> retweet this, this episode and, and tag uh, Scott. I'm really fuzzy on this. Maybe somebody can help me out. It was in one of the uh, the big. Maybe it was like Detective 1027, or it was it was in one of the big oversized issues. Um, <laughs> the whole the whole lesson of the one of the mini stories in it was um, it basically that it, I think it was like the birthday gift or something. But the whole lesson was that Dick doesn't need him anymore, and he's like, no, that's that that was the whole plan. He doesn't need me, and that, that that's all I could have asked for. I won't be here forever. Mm-hmm. Ah, wish my memory is more specific on that. Yeah, me too. You know. It's all right. It would have been in like probably, uh, I want to say 1027. I really do want to say 1027, but I'm staring at it now. It's it's, it's on the wall. I'm just not pulling it down for this. That's fair. It's not going to happen right now. Um, that That is our news. Aside from the fact that DC Comics today named uh, Marie Javins as uh, the new editor-in-chief. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they... <laughs> She's going to be co-editor-in-chief alongside Michelle R. Wells. And uh, the, uh, it was announced by uh, Daniel Cherry III, Senior Vice President and General Manager of DC Comics. Uh, said Marie intrinsically understands the power of comics and their unique ability to entertain and empower, which makes her a perfect choice to be DC's next editor-in-chief. In addition to her many creative talents, she's also incredibly committed to increasing access to this amazing industry by mentoring the next generation of comic book creators and helping them find their voices. I look forward to working with her in her new role. She, and they say here she will be responsible for developing and overseeing the execution of the company's annual publishing schedule to grow all DC imprints. She'll also lead the strategy for expanding worldwide consumer reach of DC publishing content and provide editorial and creative direction for DC imprints. Uh, working closely with Cherry and Jim Lee, DC Comics publisher and chief creative officer, she'll help define positioning, character narratives, and prioritization creative talent selection and brand attributes of each imprint and develop publishing plans with lead editors. Um, now she, she does, you know, say that you're the standard thing. She was little, she read Wonder Woman and newbie and Supergirl and never thought she'd do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, this is the part that I found interesting. Um, I never disbelieve that, by the way. Like, no, a lot of people read these things and never think you're going to be there. It's just <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I just find it boring. <laughs> it It is just like part of that kind of press release though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, she says that she wants to tell innovative visual stories that both reflect and expand our world. And in some cases, our galaxy and multiverse. Like That feels like a very pointed... Uh, what am I looking for? What, what, what phrase am I looking for? That's a... That's a, that's a very pointed messaging that they continue go. to have in <laughs> Dick, um, <laughs> in, in the DC brand. <laughs> I wasn't there till you got there. I'm actually uh-huh. rooting you on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, Dick. So, um, and I thought this was cool. Uh, she has served as DC's executive editor of uh, global publishing and digital strategy. That's important. Yeah, yeah, I caught that too. We know where that's going. We know where she's going here. Yep. Um, Where she edited Justice League, DC Superhero Girls, Superman Smashes the Clan, Harley Quinn Breaking Glass, Dark Knight's Death Metal. So that those are pretty. She also did that Snagglepuss comic, but <laughs> those it's a wide heard, range of things. I heard good things from people who who cared. I wasn't one of them, but that that wasn't in my childhood. So. I mean, I took it out because it's not DC necessarily. Not really. It's Hanna Barbera and the Warner Brothers. They cross over here and there, but um, but yeah, uh, anyway. the digital part is um, you know, I, it's it's been signaled several times. So I, I you know, signaled. They have taken their dick out and is tattooed on the side. There's been a warning shot over the bow <laughs> that crashed into the bow and a little pop up. Like Joker esque or Wiley Cody mm-hmm. style pop up came out of the top and said, "You know what's coming, right?" Uh, yeah, like I, I, I do hate to admit this, but I think like the monthly prints are, are, you know, we've said it a few times. I think it's a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, if I was in charge of it, I would probably try to push it towards that way, push it towards just getting rid of the uh, the monthly books, except for probably action and detective. Yeah, it may just get winnowed down to a such a specific set um and I mean, then yeah when they're still making right, or even black label right now is still uh usually selling pretty well and they have a pretty high price point on them so i, I think they're over overall on black label i think they're actually making their money on print which is fine like when it's making yeah. money it's making money it's great yeah but you know the the, the average premium format books yeah that'll work <laughs> exactly um but yeah, the average the average uh, you know twenty four pages or whatever with uh, monthly or bi monthly is it. I will miss it. I really will. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and keep everything on my list as long as it stays there. But it yeah, it may re- it may be a limited period of time, and it's not gonna be her fault if that's how this happens. It's just where things are going, and she apparently has some aptitude about how to make that happen successfully. I can't imagine she'll do a worse job than Didio. I he's one of those where like it seems like for the for like. A, the first couple of years, it was it was really doing a thing, and and I think sales went up, and there was a lot of hype, and then it just it really went the other way on him. Yeah, well, we're we're gonna start getting some good creators back who just couldn't stand a deal, like Mark Wade. So yeah, yeah, there's gonna be plenty. <laughs> but there's people now that like Scott Snyder, a, a K, occasionally has said something where you're like, yeah, I don't think he liked a deal. He's never said it outright, but he said stuff that's very close. Mm-hmm. Um. And I mean, yeah, and he's one of the big heavy hitters right now. Um, but yeah, what from what I can tell, all of all of the creators that I follow, all the writers that I follow, uh, and, and ones that I don't, because I looked around a little bit, they are all very excited about her. There's, it's apparently, it, and you know, I have no reason to think there's some like conspiracy here or anything. The mm-hmm. people who have worked with her seem to be very excited about her, and I'm I'm just gonna roll with it. Yeah, they should know more than I do. I'm I'm excited to see where where DC Comics goes. Like uh, it's been a drastic change in leadership over there. Yeah, and I'm very interested to see. It. Like, and I'm hearing you know word around the 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 mill here is that mm-hmm. they're going to be pushing more towards individual stories from celebrated creators instead of just like cranking out the old monthly ho hum. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> which is and fine. like trying to, I mean, and not really doing like a, a, a central universe so much as a, hey, just write your story and it'll fit where we can. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's something you and I talked about years ago yeah. that we would do if we were in charge, where we would just be like, look, make your thing. Don't worry about it. You can grab from anywhere in the universe. There is an infinite multiverse according to our storylines. So just play. And if we do like a big event, we'll do a big event and see, see what fits. Yeah. Um, I think that's very much on board with what they're 
going to attempt here. Like, so, <laughs> and I, I, I think the seeds have been planted for a while. And I say that because even in canon, they've kind of introduced, uh, um, have you seen the omniverse term being thrown around? Uh, yeah. Um, it, it's the multiverse multiverse. Like mm-hmm. there, that, that there's even a recorder, uh, that, even the multiverses are just subject to the omniverse. Mm-hmm. They are literally creating an in-canon explanation for being able to do whatever they want. And it's on paper, it all fits. Yep. I mean, that and letting the creators kind of do what they're good at is, I mean, just good business as far as making a good story. I'm down, man. Yeah, I'm not hating on it. I think there's still going to be events. I mean, clearly they are. Like, they've got Future State and, uh, you know, some Endless Winter and some other stuff planned right now. You know, Future State is, I think, it's it's an inner rim thing where they were just salvaging what they had floating around from the Dio's bullshit. They're A little bit. I think they're going to make use of it, but it is going to be a company-wide thing for a minute. There will still be company-wide, you know, directives and plans and ideas. Like, there will still be events. Yes, I agree with that. But it won't be... Like you said, some of the ho-humness of the monthlies is just depending on the writer and how, you know, where everything's going. Like sometimes stuff's hot or cold, you know? Mm-hmm. So maybe we can get a little more hot if we just kind of let people go a little bit crazy creatively and, you know, take the chains off a little here and there. And then when there's a good, hot, you know, big event idea, tie it in. Yeah. Here, here's what I think is really smart about it, though, is you can really easily distribute, like create and distribute uh, age appropriate material. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Without having to worry about it, like fitting in somewhere into Canon. Like, yeah, there, here's a thing for, for young adults. Here's a thing for kids. Here's a thing for, you know, us 40 year olds who want to, I don't know, watch Jason Todd blow spice brains out. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why did that come to mind immediately? I looked down and I've got a Jason Todd figure on my desk. He's holding a machine gun and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably killing some people because you know that's <laughs> what he does oh no he, i've actually got him because i like both heads he came with two heads he came with uh, jason todd head that's got the mask mm-hmm. and then he's got the uh he's got the red hood helmet mm-hmm. and he's holding i've got him like posed where he's holding the helmet up like uh you know a last poor yorick you know nice <laughs> nice <laughs> very good uh yeah, man. So you want to you want to hit a break and then we'll come back and do some uh, listener questions. Yeah, sure. Cool. Awesome. We'll be Not right good. back. Yeah, all right. We're back. Did you guys enjoy hearing Flo talk about insurance? I don't know what the hell happened. Probably more mattresses. <laughs> I don't know what our I don't know what our ads are. Uh, and honestly. they change, honestly. Like they're dynamic they ad pulls, so you could listen to it twice and find four different fucking ads. It's I know we used to have one that was like <laughs> they, they just kept playing that cake by the ocean song and it was something I don't even know what it was about. I just remember being annoyed by the song. <laughs> I get that. All right, so I threw out the question, uh or I th- <laughs> threw out the invitation for listeners to uh, send us their questions because I knew it was going to be kind of a light week. Mm-hmm. Threw down the gauntlet. Yeah. Threw down yon gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Slapped thine left cheek with my glove. It was it was mine right cheek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I got that far if it was accurate, frankly. It does seem to be the right <laughs> cheek, though. You go like a cross. You, you do the, the mm-hmm. backhand, right? And most I people mean, are right-handed, so. Oh, no, I slapped my own ass. So, yeah, with my right hand, I slapped my own ass. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I do that. I don't know why. Yep. Good luck to us all there, then. <laughs> J. Scotty St. Clair uh, over on Twitter. It's, uh, these are all on Twitter, so let me just say that. <laughs> says, over at with the, the one multi- place we'll be visiting. Yep, yeah, with the multiverse being all the rage these days. Would you be open to live action heroes interacting with ones from DC's animated properties a la Who Framed Roger Rabbit? If so, which live action and animated versions of your favorite characters would be most fun to pit together? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've often wondered. Sounds fantastic. Within the multiverse, do the, the, if, if we're dealing with like, you know, a live action situation, if they go to the Batman the animated series universe, does it look like 
live action or does it look like the animated series? Yeah. Funnily now, enough, I think a lot of the animated series, if you did live action, would actually look a little bit like 66 because those streets are often very sparse. Mm-hmm. Unless they do a big pullout shot and then they just draw in a bunch of like headlights or something. But still, it, it wasn't highly trafficked. I mean, neither was Burton's. Oh, I know. And there's a reason because that shed's expensive. Yes, it is. It's funny about like uh, the 89 Batman because I just watched – a big segment of it, yeah, not yesterday, the other day, mm-hmm. was like there's like no one in the streets as they're having these like cha- the Joker's goons are chasing after Batman right. and Vicky Vale in the Batmobile, except for when they like suddenly need like the goons to crash. Oh yeah, like it's like there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Batman runs a corner and then like the goons try to come after him and then this like twenty five lettuce trucks. <laughs> yeah, like, and- <laughs> always a damn lettuce truck. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I'll no, tell you but, why. Insurance purposes. That's probably why. Probably. Also, I think it's a, it was a closed set. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty uh, sure that. But I thought that whole thing was soundstaged. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. I think all the streets were. Yeah. Um. Now, here's a question that I have, though, mm-hmm. because in my head, because I I, I need uh, aesthetic aesthetic continuity, so there would they would have to explain why. The lines of their universe got cleaner between Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures. Mm-hmm. Why they became more angular. Um, <laughs> okay. This is the kind of shit that like bugs Matt on Star Trek Universe podcast. I'm like, mm, nope, that Enterprise don't look right. It's not the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Different universe. Um, or time travel. Something. Mm-hmm. So I have to go like either represent it to me. As live action or give me an explanation, I guess. I don't know. Or or we or we could say that finally say that uh, those Batman the animated series and the new Batman adventures, new adventures of Batman, whatever the hell it was called. Uh, I always I think of it, it was, as Gotham Knights. I thought it was the new adventures. I thought it was Batman and the new adventures. Oof. Hold on. I saw this. Like, <laughs> give me about four seconds. Yeah. <sighs> Was it was it Batman the Adventure Continues? No, or is that that's that, that is the name of the comic that they are doing right now. Okay. Um, oh, the new adventure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, and you know, in the Wizard Magazine where they where they announced it, they called it Batman Gotham Knights. So, in my heart, that's what I always called it. And mm-hmm. then, like when it aired, it wasn't called New Adventures of Batman or Gotham Knights. It was called the Batman Superman Hour or whatever it was. So I was just like. <laughs> and now when it's packaged on DVD, it's Batman Animated Series Volume 4. Yeah. So, what what have you? Who cares? Uh, I have a random DVD that's like Batman Superman, and it's just a couple episodes where they vaguely crossed over. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's not even, any, it, not even like particularly good branding. It's just they threw all the names on the case and said, here's three episodes. Great. That sounds right. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'd be, I would be open to it. I'd be very open to it. Jay Scotty. I'm in. Um, Matthew Salvatore mm-hmm. says, how would you like Leto's Joker included into Zack's Justice League? Anywhere they want to put him. Wherever Zack wants him, I will take him. Also, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a part of the equation. What What do you mean? I mean, I would assume that it would be however, ja- uh, however Jack, however Zack wanted him <laughs> to be included. I mean, uh, as... I, all right, so I, I think one of the things we know is that there will be some form of Leto showing up in uh, the four hours, right? Uh-huh. So the question is only, like, where would we like that to be and, and you know, in what context kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, my uh, – there's a lot of things that could be fun. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun to see, you know, given all we talked about earlier, the, you know, the ruination of uh, a Robin would be kind of fun. But – Yes. Uh, if there was just a, a sidebar of the formation of – you know, an Injustice League or a Legion of Doom or whatever you want to call it at the time. Mm. Um, that that yeah, that might be my favorite go-to here. I'll, I'll admit the first thing I thought of would be nightmare sequence. Oh gosh, what if Batman has to team up with Joker, this dude who is who killed Dick Grayson? What if he has to team up with him to stop Superman in the nightmare timeline or something? You know? Yeah, it's not bad, but I don't think that's necessarily what's going to happen because I, I, based on what Zach has said before. Time travel is going to be the the end of the nightmare timeline where Batman tells Cyborg, or no, it's Cyborg, which one would you send Barry back to? 
Okay, do the other one. Yeah. Because that one didn't work. Now, if I can mm, if I can help expound, uh, well, this would be kind of fun for me. And they've done a little bit of it. Um, yeah, they really have done a lot of that, actually, in the Snyder version of things to some extent. But the idea that uh, somebody like Darkseid's on the way and Batman mm-hmm. has to resort to asking someone like Joker, like, what would you do? And him just kind of laughingly being like, well, I would do this. And that turning out to be right because, you know, he's fucking chaos embodied. Um, mm-hmm. it, it It is a fun moment to think about. Just the idea that he has to actually turn to that kind of chaos and be like, I don't even know how to conceive of this. Uh, I mean, what, what should I prepare for? And it, I, I like the idea of Leto just laughing and just being like, oh, my God, you don't even have – you have no idea. Um you're not even close to prepared for this. What I would do is this, 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 and this. And just like the idea of Ben Affleck looking at him and just like mouth slightly agape being like, you know what, you're right. I didn't think of any of that. You evil yeah, bastard. No, I got to go back to the be, lab. If they have to do – if he would have to – if he had to team up with Lara uh, – Lara Jetto. Lara Jetto. With, with Jared Leto's Joker. As he's He had to team known. up with him in the Nightmare Timeline mm-hmm. to, you know, accomplish some – goal so that they can accomplish the time travel i think it'd be really cool if he accomplished the goal and as soon as they accomplished it he killed leto's joker Mm -hmm. and like leto's joker just like died laughing because he he got his way and batman killed him also good uh if and if we're dealing with time travel and especially a flash you have to deal with uh potentially not not at all hinted at uh just saying if we're dreaming here um if you're, again, just consulting, using him as, as a, a, a consultant, um, hey, what would you do if you were in this position? You know, what would you do if you were the reverse Flash? Uh, because, you know, thematically, Batman's, Joker's kind of a reverse Batman. Just giving him that playbook on reverse Flash and, and letting that even lead into Flashpoint. Um, like, what would you do if you had all these powers and were evil? Oh, no, I have a whole game plan for that. Mm-hmm. What would you do if you were a speedster Flash? <laughs> oh, 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 I'd kill him this way, you know? Yeah. I like to think that Joker just ponders these kinds of considerations occasionally just because it makes me happy. <laughs> what would you do if you had Aquaman's powers? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Joker. Mm-hmm. I, I ponder these things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stu Little asks, uh, what do you think Alan Scott being a gay man, a gay man means for Jade and Obsidian's place in continuity? I don't necessarily think it means anything. Yeah. Because, I mean, you look at a show like Doom Patrol, uh, uh, Negative Man has kids. Yeah. And he just, especially if they do the thing that they've been talking about or that the rumors suggest. Uh, again, I don't know how legitimate those rumors are. But if they're doing like Alan Scott's in the 1940s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he might have a wife. Yeah. He might have some kids. Like, you know. No, I mean. Uh, it, like being gay does not uh, preclude offspring. I mean, you, <laughs> it it's uh, it's it's a let's put it this way: it's a crazy spectrum, and um, everyone's made some decisions that they later thought were not necessarily indicative of who they were completely. Mm-hmm. Now you can say that's a one night stand and and flavor it that way if you want to all day, but yeah, man, I, like being a gay guy doesn't mean you don't have like a woman you slept with for. What, like a couple days and added a child with it. Right. It's not, that, that's not exclusive. And I would be really interested to see how they would work in uh, Rosenthorn, his, the, the mother, uh, in, into into this equation. Like, yeah. does him, is he a closeted gay man? I would assume if he was in the 40s, yes, he would be. Like, does that play a role in her uh, eventual psychotic break? Like, you know, the, uh, the, what is it, uh, graphic audio that I've referenced, I don't know how many times at this point? Mm hmm. Uh, series of, series of them called Sleepers, which I don't know what they're based on. Um, I, I, I can't remember the author at this point. I'm sure it's based on an author. I don't think they did many that were not based on somebody's actual writing. But in that, he's just like, he just had a relationship and at some point, that just wasn't who he was anymore. So mm-hmm. yeah, he had a child as a result of it, but that ultimately wasn't him. So that was all there really is to it. Yeah. She's still there and he's still gay. That's all. There. I mean, right. I'm just saying that, yeah, there's, there's leeway. There's plenty of leeway for, for Jade and Obsidian to show up if they need them to. Yeah. 
Um, it might even be the most interesting thing they could they could really do. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's by no means an exclusive uh, problem. I call it or an invalidating yep. problem. Uh, Eli Hernandez asks, "What villains do you want to see in the new Green Lantern series? HBO Max has just green lighted. No pun intended. Well, first of all, I don't believe you. I think the pun was in, was intended. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been avoiding it for some time, and we've I all been falling it. prey from time to time. <laughs> um, I, I just want, I want to see the Red Lanterns. I want to see I want to see all the the different spectrums. Oh, the whole spectrum. Yeah, I want to see the spectrums. I want to see Kanjar Row." Um, Mongol, I'll, I'll, I'll take anybody. I'll, I will. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll take anybody. I know that's a cop out answer, but I don't feel like there's, um, if there's one person I don't care about seeing, it's probably Hector Hammond. That's fair. I feel like I've had enough Hector Hammond based just from the Ryan Reynolds movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I'm good on Hector. I mean, I it's, think I'm good on Hector. It's still doable, but yeah, there's plenty to explore in the Green Lantern core that don't. I mean, you can you can dive into the spectrum. You can, I mean, fuck, you can dive into the Black Lanterns. You can mm-hmm. you can go crazy with this thing if you want to. Yeah, you really could. You really could. Short of that, something I want to see that's not a villain is I, I want to see you know Mogu. Yeah, just Mogu. Yeah. Mogu. Sorry, Mogu is the pillow you put behind your neck. Um, <laughs> God, that's that's like what's that? Twenty years ago? Anyway, I I don't know, man. Yeah, I wouldn't I mind. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Mogu at all, though. But yeah, the, uh, especially if I had to pick a shade, uh, yellow, red, and orange. Okay. What is that? Fear, anger, and avarice? Is that yeah. right? Okay. I, I want to see all of them. I want to season this nothing but spectrum war. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Whole freaking ultraviolet spectrum now to play with if you really want to. Yeah. Uh, low key in 83 talks to us says uh what are your thoughts on the rumor that john boyega wants to play a big screen jason todd well i don't know how much of a rumor it is uh you know someone asked him if he or someone said they wanted him to play static shock he said no i'm too old for that and then someone said uh no you got to play john stewart and he was like well damn i can't play red hood (laughs) so i mean evidently it's on his mind i kind of like that he knows the reference to be honest well yeah I, I, mean, I, in there for it. I don't mind. I wouldn't mind him playing Red Hood. Uh, the only thing that I would mind is I'd feel bad for the guy because, you know, to go from the toxic shit show that is the Star Wars fan base. Ah, I see where you're going. That's fair. Directly into the toxic <laughs> shit show that is the DC Comics fan base. Yeah, that would be and then something. To be, and then to be, not that I'm against it, but then to be portraying a black version of a traditionally white character After. and DC fans do have their issues with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see where you're, I see where you're going. It's biting off a lot. Uh, I'd feel bad for the guy, honestly. Although I think he has the backbone for it. Oh, he has the backbone for it for sure. And I, yeah, I would, I would, I'd be just fine. Look, in the Actually, comics, a good Jason- point. if given all you just said, it's something that I would be like, okay, John, <clears throat> We like you for this role. I just want you to know what you're up against. Mm-hmm. Because this, 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 and this are going to happen. And I just want you to know that beforehand. And I think he would kind of look at you and be like, tell me something I don't know, man. Just sign me the fuck up. Yeah. Like, that would be fine. Uh, as, as long as he understood what was going to – I'm sure he does. I'm sure he knows. Oh, yeah. But I would, I I would still feel bad for him. He's not savvy about that, that like fan entitlement issue. No. But, you know, here, here's the thing, though. Even in the comics, when Jason Todd premiered, he was a ginger, dude. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then they couldn't so even decide whether he in was the Bat Family now. Yeah, and they couldn't decide whether he was blonde or if he was like redheaded or and then all of a sudden he was just a dick clone, man. Aesthetically he just looked like Dick. Yeah. And that's where they that's where they landed. And now they can't seem to decide whether or not he's got the stripe in his hair or they kinda keep going back to hush and I'm like, I don't think that that wasn't that wasn't him though. That was <laughs> Clayface pretending to be him. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what they remember. It's what I remember, and I'm drawing him, and I've got four hours to get out eight hours worth of drawing, so whatever. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Jay, my point is Jason Todd's had a lot of different looks. Uh, he has shifted quite a bit from time to time, and it wouldn't bother me. You know, it's a multiverse. Who the shit cares? Yeah. Uh, I think John Boyega is a great actor. Yeah. Uh, 
he did a really great job in Star Wars. I didn't have any kind of problem with him. I don't know why people were so upset. I I, I just don't. So another thing to your point is like we're talking about somebody who has openly spoken out about how his role was diminished in Star Wars, mm-hmm. and then to go into a property where your role is like actively diminished as like yeah, again we but thirty five year old canon on our part. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that does seem like a man. I mean. If he took it on knowing all that, and I think he would know all that, I'd have to have a lot of respect for him. Because there's there's no way the internet's not going to be mad about it or a portion of it. <laughs> Segments of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm all for it. Hell, man. I'd just be go, impressed go he was willing it. to, like, tow the load and fucking do it. And also, yeah, he could do it. Yeah, he could do it, for sure. I mean, I, he could play Red Hood. I don't, I don't see him playing, like, a young Robin or anything. <laughs> this is one of those he's too old things. There, yeah, there's there's going to be an age thing there. And then are we talking about, is he with, like, Batfleck? Is, was this, like, a little interim thing that happened? We're like, eh, what happened? What happened? Yeah, but even, like, this, this, all right, so. You know, if, it, I'm saying if it was Batfleck. Stroll, like, and even like, in the it, Bat family nowadays, you know, he, mm-hmm. Jason Todd is still, he's still, like, the one who really did piss Bruce off. Like, yeah. like Dick is still there, like you said, uh, like we said before, he's still Batman occasionally. Uh, Tim Drake has always been you know, pretty in line with the the Bruce Wayne values of how to be a bat. And, you know, there, there are a lot of people that are pretty much very much on the core values of the bat family. Mm-hmm. And Jason Todd is uh, a giant middle finger in some ways to a lot of that. But he, he appreciates the training, but go fuck yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to yeah. end people. And that's just, that's my choice. Which there, it would be interesting if they made it Snyder verse, and they said, okay, this was Batfleck's second Robin. Oh, you know it'd you be could, fun? Maybe you're going for that. Go for ahead. me to complete a sentence? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, to really showcase, like, that's, you know, no wonder Batman's out here killing folk and being crazy. Like, he lost he lost Dick. And, you know, in, like, the, the new Bat or the new adventures or the adventures continue, whatever it is, yeah. comic they're doing now, that's how they did it. There is they they said oh yeah he was the second Robin and dude they like Bruce never had a body like he just like, he kind of went rogue and then now he showed up again he's now Red Hood so like if they did that we're just like we do like a flashback and we see like oh here's you know a Batfleck movie or something is like not only did he lose Richard but like he thought he he lost his second Robin and then that bastard came back to haunt him that might be really interesting to do. Yeah, that's I mean, what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, um, the that and the the idea of the increasing violence um, that both uh, Batman would uh, like Batman's increased kind of uh, not even vengeance so much as just the like the absolute anger of having lost somebody he cared about uh, that kind of like that unstoppable uh, anger, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and then just. Like the new Robin kind of taking on the man a little bit and just being like, you know what? No, that guy got killed. I'm going to try some new shit. But I'm sorry. I'm 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 going to pull out some guns, man. I'm not going yeah. down like that. Yeah. I can deal with that. Anyway, uh, Travis Hines sent us a, a link to a YouTube video mm-hmm. and uh, wanted us to answer these questions. He said, I need you to answer both questions. And um, it is a clip from the monorail episode of The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I think it's Ralph Wiggum asks if uh, the monorail can beat the Flash. So, no, the monorail can't beat the Flash. (laughs) And then another uh, unnamed child asks, can Superman beat the Flash? No. No. (laughs) When he did, that was for charity. (laughs) Answer to both (laughs) is no. As has been established. Absolutely. (laughs) I love that monorail episode. It's good. I forgot about that gag. That, That was also good. That episode was written by Conan O'Brien. Mm-hmm. That was uh, so good. Some of his most memorable work on that one. Written by Conan, guest starring Phil Hartman. Uh, How do you beat that? Uh, you don't. You just don't. And also, Leonard Nimoy was in that episode. Uh, that's just, that's fantastic, too. Bastard beams away. <laughs> fantastic. They even brought uh, up the, like, the speed discrepancy in uh, Deceased in the first, you know, the first, like, issues of Deceased before it was mm-hmm. what is now our franchise. And uh, one of the problems was, like, Flash gets infected before Superman does. And Superman realizes he can't actually catch him. He's going to have to run the other way. So he just runs the other way around the world. And uh, 
he does he does you know destroy him in fact he pulverizes him but at that speed it it actually like some of flashes it's it's it, it it's a rib it looks like but um yeah at that speed it actually manages to uh penetrate superman's skin mm-hmm. and that's how you get zombie superman of course which is which is how that series <laughs> originally was going to end i guess before the whole franchise got developed because dear <laughs> god zombie superman is not pretty well no but yeah even in even in that version of things like you know he, he couldn't catch him he couldn't just stop him he, he wished he could have because it was his friend after all but he, he couldn't yeah uh, Henry Cooper mm-hmm. wants us to rank every season of Arrow from worst to best. Oh, wow. I mm, I need so much prep time. <laughs> I don't know that I need that much. Mm. Worst to best. We've got eight seasons until Amel starts doing another one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, I'm going to say season six is the worst. I can live with that. Uh, Although I like some of the characters that came well, out of yeah, it. Yeah, I like some of the characters, period, throughout all of it. But yeah, season six came right. Came and season, season six tried to be season five and just failed miserably. Mm-hmm. Um, then for me, I think it's probably season two next. I did not like season two very much. No, you know what? I'm going to go. I think three. Yeah, I'm going to go season six, season two, season four, season three, season one. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Um, I'm going to put, yeah, I might have to write this down as I do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing track. I'm losing track. All right. Let's, let's figure this out. Really? For real. Let's do this. All uh, right. So six, so one, two, three. So. Sounds like you have like a whiteboard you're, wor- you're working with. It's, it's literally a pen and a piece of paper on my desk. Ah, okay. It, a lot of bouncing. I don't know what you're hearing, man. I just heard a thump, 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 thump. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. All right, so. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've got my I've got my ranking. Uh, from, yeah, from Shoot. worst to best, it is number uh, season six, season two, season four, season three, season eight, season one, season seven, and my favorite is season five. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hating on that. Um. All right, rough take. I'm gonna go with. Um, <laughs> God, uh, worst four. Hmm. Hmm. No. All right. Give me, give me a second to gather my thoughts more. Sorry. You're good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. After, um, brief and probably, uh, not enough consideration. <laughs> In order, I'm going to go with six, two, five, three, four, one, seven, eight. Wow. Okay. Well, there you have it, Henry. Sure, there's a lot to consider. <laughs> Follow up questions can be sent too, given the uh, <laughs> given the considerations that we're uh, we're, we're taking in. Yeah, like this could be an entire episode of our show. Oh yeah, so, just like, just justifying yeah. either of those figures. Yeah, yeah, because there's a whole bunch of people like, how could you say that number two was so bad? Yeah, I hated season two. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got so tired of that Mirakuru bullshit. That was a problem for me. <laughs> I just didn't like it, man. That was a problem for me. Uh, Brian Boulay asks, if you could green light a DC HBO Max series or movie, what would you choose? I'm thinking either a Super Suns or Blue and Gold series. Blue and Gold. Bat all Flick, Bat Flick Batman. Yeah. Oh, Bat- oh, okay. All right. Yeah. If I all. Mm. <sighs> okay. Yes. That. Mm hmm. Um, but, you know, if I'm really just dreaming. Yeah. Man is still two as an entire season. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. If I'm thinking about stuff that might actually get on television, blue and gold. Mm-hmm. That'd, that'd be pretty great. Hell, I think you could just do a lot of good with just blue. Yeah. Like just Ted Cord, like just working on <laughs> just working on his tech and fighting crime would mm-hmm. still be something. <laughs> That's not a terrible idea. <laughs> no, it's, there's just a lot of fun you could have there. No, no, no. I'm not saying your idea was terrible. I just said I had a terrible idea. Oh, what'd you do? Um, a prequel to Wonder Woman, a prequel Mm. to Wonder Woman from before Steve Trevor shows up to the island, uh, (laughs) called Wonder Woman, the love before. 
Nice. An adult series exploring the... <laughs> the I feel like the you romance. don't have to finish that sentence. We already yeah. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get where that's going. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the branding HBO Max is going for. Mm-mm. It. Mm-mm. It's more of a Cinemax no. kind of situation. After mm-hmm. 11 p.m. <laughs> I'm just kidding anyway. Actually, just for funsies. Uh, that sounds really boring to me, honestly. I'm, I'm going to propose the most boring thing that I could think of. And uh, it's all just a bunch of like how-to videos. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you did like, what's the most boring thing you could think of making an entire series of with all these characters, even though they're uh, you know interesting in their own right. And it'd be like farming videos hosted by Wonder Woman or, uh, <laughs> you know, mechanics videos hosted by Hal Jordan. I, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I'm I'm good. Good. I'm good. <laughs> Leadership conferences hosted by Bruce Wayne. No, I'm good. I'm out. Thank you, though. Yeah. Bruce gives a TED Talk. Yeah, Bruce gives a TED Talk. Fuck that. Um, What what would you also call this, though? The uh, the Reporter's Angle by Clark Kent. No, don't. I'm not listening to that TED Talk either. I'm good. Or, Chris- oh, actually, you know what? I'm, I've overlooked someone. The most boring possible thing. Um, differences in Blood Types by Barry Allen. Oh, God. <laughs> that may be the worst possible one. Or The ACDC uh. Wars by <laughs> Cyborg. <laughs> like, no, <I'm> good. <laughs> Just an infomercial selling anti-life insurance from <laughs> Dark Side. <laughs> that wouldn't be from, it'd be from Gottfried. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You went right. dirty as hands. <laughs> I don't Counter, know. Just, uh, counterintelligence techniques by uh, Desaad. I just saw, you know, Dark Side and like a bad 80s blazer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those like Dan Ackwood glasses from Consumer Probe. Eight effective techniques for running a women's prep school by Granny. <laughs> Granny goodness. Just affectionately known as Granny to our peoples. Yeah. So you want to start a library with Barbara Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Why well, we still need the Dewey Decimal System by <laughs> Barbara Gordon. Oh, God. Mm. The Joys of Coding by Barbara Gordon. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. All her stuff's really boring on its, like, base level. Really oh, yeah. super fun when she, like, is being flashy about it, but... Yeah, the nuts and bolts of what she does. Ugh. Keeping your wills clean with Barbara Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> with Ford oh. by Bruce Wayne, former survivor. Oh, God. Uh, what else? Um, oh, eight, eight Tips to Cleaning Your Aquarium by uh, Aquaman. <laughs> <sighs> there's, a, there's, a whole, there's a whole series in there about how to clean from Alfred. Mm-hmm. Dear God, polishing the be. polishing the silver. Actually, those may be the most entertaining because he'd be so mad about why you're doing it wrong and have these like super intricate explanations of why this was like you know no the the Turkish used to do this a certain way when they developed the the parts of the Bronze Age that still still resonate to this day and that's why we have a certain way we clean this thing. Okay, great. <laughs> also pretty cool, probably in a way. It's gonna be like the the least watched masterclass though on the app. I want to see Jim Gordon's master class on uh, finagling taxpayer dollars to pay for the bat signal. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, you know, I'm leaving out somebody else. Um, one of the uh, uh, oof, um, mm, top top four uh, now it has to be odd numbers, right, for listicles, right? Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be. It's just for some reason. Uh, for some reason, the best. It, it does better. Know. It does better. Um, People click on them more. Top seven misuses of metallurgy. Within uh, industrial engineering uh, purposes, John Stewart. Hmm. Okay. It's gonna be, a bit, the weird part is it's gonna be like it. It's next to an article. It's like nine things you didn't know about flying test jets by Hal Jordan. And yeah, it's gonna the clicks are through the roof. Mm-hmm. How to fix your AC unit by Victor Freeze. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a wiki how article and. <clears throat> If, like oh, it's gonna be one of those twenty-one minute videos with three useful things to say taking place over like forty-five seconds. Yeah, it's gonna be like really like straightforward, like 
common sense things. Yeah. 14 you minutes know, like, of what are basically going to qualify as an un- unboxing video. Right. Like take the front of the, the unit off of the thing, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then like the final step is steal the diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> No, like at 23 minutes and like 32 seconds or some bullshit, somebody like freezes the frame uh, and and zooms in in the top right. And it's what looks like a glass framing. And there's like the bottom of a foot and there's a a circle and a conspiracy theory, which, you know, spoiler alerts would be right. Oh, God, we've forgotten Um, 11 tips to home gardening by Poison Ivy. Of course. Of course. Naturally. Kicking the habit with Bane. Yeah. Five things minds are doing wrong by the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> the three best money making tips by Cobblepot. Yeah. Safety tips with Superman, you know, lift with your flight aura, not your back. <laughs> um. <laughs> deadlifts are deadlifts are bad. We know that. <laughs> What you want to do is you want to compress the earth under you instead of lifting up. That's better for your spine. Mm-hmm. Better to poke a hole in the freaking asphalt. Yep. Or uh, motivational speaking with Superman. Uh, <laughs> honing in on your inner Kryptonian. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> this is after the Bendis period, I assume. <laughs> I haven't read the Bendis period. I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, no. It's after the uh, uh, Clark Kent outing himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Five ways to your inner Kryptonian, Clark Kent. How Seven I came ways out of the to be successfully ma- married to an alien by Lois Lane. <sighs> Sorry, I like that one. I like that one. Coming out of the crystal closet. No, oh, that's good. Yeah, that is good. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, let's move on. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's time. Mm-hmm. Eleven ways to beat a horse. <laughs> There should be like some sort of cult survivor uh, TED Talk series from Jean-Paul Valley. When I left oh. the Church of St. Dumas, the Order of St. Dumas. Yeah. Followed by a sequel, relapsing into the <laughs> Order of St. <Saint> Dumas. <laughs> Finding your true passion within the Order of the St. Dumas. <laughs> Episode number three, From Jail. So I fell for Nexium. Oh, God. My bad. It's just that... It's just that Keith Rainier sounded so much like Saint Dumas. <laughs> he used to come to me in hallucinatory dreams. Dude, not tell me to build sex gauntlets. <laughs> <laughs> All of the images was barely phallic. I don't know. I fell for it. <laughs> I was deceived. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At its base, it just promised me that a very smart man was telling me I could have sex a lot, and it seemed like a good idea. <laughs> also, they. Blackmail. What is it, the Jerry Fowl thing? I have sinned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Balga over on uh, on Twitter. Well, I already said it was on Twitter. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Chris, Chris Balga says, uh, what characters would you like a DC character and or team to cross over with outside of DC and Marvel? For example, we have had Batman and TMNT or Star Trek and Green Lanterns. It can be outrageous or as serious as you want it to be. And what would be the pitch? Uh, Doctor Who all day. Mm-hmm. Ooh, really? Doctor Who? Yep. Who would be? Who would he be crossing over with? Just the entire universe? Uh, it, and which doctor? The most gratifying thing. You know, honestly, any. Uh, because they all kind of have the same energy to some extent. But um, just any of them. And if I was really just dreaming, I would say, you know, just full Justice League. Just shows up at the table of the Justice League. Mm-hmm. With a little speech about like, oh, you're only a legend on other planets. I can't believe it. Good to meet you, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then, actually, what would be a lot of fun is it would be a Doctor Who versus Brainiac episode. Okay, that right. could be cool. It, that would seem like a very fitting villain for Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Um, my pitch or my my idea is I tend to go small mm-hmm. with my ideas. Like I really like fun little character pieces. And my thought, the, as soon as I read the question, was I want to see Constantine and Willoughby Kipling have a run-in with Spike and Angel from the Buffyverse. Oh, that's pretty sweet, too. Yeah. Because the whole thing would be like Spike would fall in perfectly with those two. Yeah. And Angel would just be pissed the yeah. entire time. Yeah. Like, like, containing his soul, Angel would just be beside himself. Like, oh, these, oh, these fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to do again? Oh, my God. 
That's going to kill so many people. No, find another fucking way. <laughs> you know, there's always a cost. Uh, fuck your cost, man. Find another way. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that made me think of it immediately is too, is because, you know, Constantine always says magic always has a cost. And friggin' Spike said that. And what was it? Season five or six when they tried to bring Buffy's mom back from the yeah. dead. Yeah. Um, he says it later when he, you know, sacrifices himself, I think, or a version of it. But yeah, he knows that. And that's part of the whole thing. Yeah. So. Plus, they're, you know, it's just blonde guys hanging around in duster smoking. I'm good with that. I really am. <laughs> um, also, I mean, Constantine's a lot of fun for a lot of reasons, but I also just don't mind any version that I... When, anytime I see Constantine burst what would be called, like, a universal monster, mm-hmm. like Universal the Company, uh, the, the classic monster set, yeah, fuck yeah, man. I'm, I'm into that. Also, just like the classic monsters myself. I mean, shit. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a whole canon that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, also, I, I had a secondary thought, and they mm-hmm. sort of already, have already done it on a credit card commercial, but I would love to see Seinfeld and Superman. Oh, yeah. I, I want to like see your com- best chance for this is in a uh, How It Should Have Ended. <laughs> yeah. Um, they they uh, Seriously, there was like a Super Bowl commercial, I think, and it was like an animated version of Superman voiced by Patrick Warburton. Mm-hmm. Hanging out and walking around, walking and talking with Jerry. And they had a very, like, fun, like, Seinfeld questioning things about Superman. Mm -hmm. Who, by the way, is a giant fucking fan. Yeah. Seinfeld's a huge fan of Superman. And uh, I would love to see a full, like, comedians in cars getting coffee. Where it's just, like, like, Jerry and, like, Henry Cavill as Superman. (laughs) Just somebody in character. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Just... I don't know. Whatever whatever Seinfeld would say. Yeah. That seems fun. So when you do this, you know, what the hell happens if this actually happens? Yeah. I could get that. Um, so you're here from a parallel dimension. <laughs> you know, here you're a comic book. Yeah. I can get behind that. Uh, who's somebody that I think would be a lot of fun for this? Somebody f- fun. Like somebody that would be just crazy because they're uh, kind of in between in a way would be like a version of Justice League Dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the underworld universe, hmm. I do love the underworld universe. It, it there there are some like the films got progressively uh, more complicated and uh, not so much in the what what you saw, but like they uh, the production wise, it, it got convoluted and it was it was weird, man. I, like some of the last couple films, to borrow the phrase from Futurama, escaped. So mm-hmm. it. it yeah. I would like to have seen that universe uh, do a little bit more here and there because I really I, – I enjoyed the shit out of that. You know, the the Corvins, the hybrids, all the mythology with that. It was a lot of fun for me because, like mm-hmm. I said, I really do love the old, like, classic monster set. Yeah. So to see something like Justice League Dark or even a portion of it, like even just, uh, you know, a new version of, like, Man Bat with it and, you know, uh, Detective Chimp or, hell, just, just Swamp Thing uh, wandering in the universe. It would be a lot of fun for me. Mm-hmm. I can see that. I don't even know what would happen exactly. I, I I have no pitch for it other than I would like to see the characters in a room. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you might hate me for this one. No. Batman Beyond. Okay. And The Fifth Element. Ooh, I don't hate you for that one. <laughs> it seems cool, right? Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm good. Or like Firefly running into the Legion of Superheroes at some point. Maybe so. I don't think it would. I mean, it'd have to be like a parallel dimension Convergent situation, but yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking most about of these space would be them up versus <laughs> some of the other stuff. Yeah, I did think of Commandi the Last Boy and the Tenth Doctor. Mm. Okay, I so rarely think of Commandi the Last Boy because I just well, there were open... a lot of animal people in Tenant's Run. There were, there were. That's actually really true. That's a good point. <laughs> That's what made me think of it. It's just like you know, I mean, oh, yeah, he had a lot of animal people, didn't he? Now that you've said it, you're right. There were a lot of animal people, um, some rhinos up front and so on. There but, was a, uh, you know, uh, an old fashioned cat who didn't like the idea of lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. That was a weird take on that. It made me laugh because he kept referring to those old ladies as sisters and they're like, you know very well we're not sisters. We're lovers. He's like, oh, don't talk like that. I'm an old fashioned cat. <laughs> <sighs> I forget. Now that you said it, I remember. Yeah, it was like um, an old-fashioned cat who's married to a human woman, and they have a basket of kittens in the back of their car. I have so many like family members that fit for that. I <laughs> I think I'd repress that just a little bit. Yeah, I remember it now. 
Mm-hmm. I get you. <laughs> oh, gosh. That part could be a lot of fun, though. I think that does it for me as far as the uh, crossovers. Oh, you know, I just thought, though, if they did a Commandi and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. that might work. How? More giant animal people. How? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Donnie makes some kind of machine and they wind up going into an alternate future where, you know, animal people were all over the place and maybe they didn't want to come back because, damn it, they f- actually feel like they can go out in public now. Mm, okay. I can get behind that. Okay. I can deal with that. Yeah. All right. No. I, you're right. I can deal with that. It's not, I'm not voting for it outright, <laughs> but I can deal with it. Well, that's good, man. That's good. You got to keep that mind open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got to keep it uh, free and clear, ready to accept new ideas. I try to stay pliable. Mm-hmm. I think that was the name of one of those ill-fated bastards in Pilgrim's Progress. Old pliable. <laughs> Old pliable? <laughs> yeah. The hell I think you... there was... <laughs> what? Poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Old pliable's story was never all that straightforward. <laughs> I don't remember what happened to Pliable. Mm. He became part of a overly blunt allegory, much like the rest of the story. Ah, Pliable was a neighbor of Christians who accompanies him for a while. After falling in the slough of despond, Pliable is discouraged and returns home, only only to be mocked by the townsfolk. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Readers digest uh, Dante's Inferno, I guess I'll call that. You never read Pilgrim's Progress? Being oh, I raised read in the it. South? <laughs> God, I read it. It was on every shelf I every shelf I visited. Uh huh. It was not uh, a particularly clever piece of work. No, no. And then, you know, I went to like a Christian school, and man, they were they thought that was like an epic for the ages. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I remember being scolded because I hadn't read it, so I did. Uh, they hit us hard and early, man, with that in like third grade. Like, we think you're you're at an age where you can understand the first the first book of Pilgrim's Progress. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I get that. Oh, we missed an obvious one. What's that? Um it's Constantine again, but you could pick anybody. Zatanna, actually. You know what? Zatanna and Ghostbusters. I thought of Ghostbusters and Justice League Dark. I did. Mm-hmm. I didn't mention it because I thought it was too vague. No, but it's, yeah, that's something I could get on board with pretty hard. Yeah, I could do Ghostbusters in anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything, especially like uh, Zatanna, her father, Constantine. Dr. Oh, Fate. Actually, uh, Blue Demon. Oh, Dr. Ooh. Fate would be fun. Blue Demon and Dr. Ooh. Mm-hmm. All right. So a lot of Justice League Dark and Ghostbusters. Yeah, that's why I just said Justice League Dark. Yeah. A lot of fun there. I, don't know mm-hmm. I didn't think of Ghostbusters to begin with, but. Oh, you know what we're missing, right? This is like Dead Man. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, fuck. Just Spectre. Mm-hmm. Dead Man. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Just uh, Dead Man, like, convincing Ghostbusters that he can help and uh, and, and then eventually learning to kind of trust him. A little bit like they did Slimer, but, you know, mm. it, that's mostly in the animated series, but whatever. Um, yeah, they didn't really have really much of an interaction with Slimer in the movies. Yeah. Uh, a lot of when he slimed Peter. Yeah. It was pretty hard interaction for him, but yeah, sure. Uh, a lot of fun. If you had the ghostbusters run up against like specter mm-hmm. where they just it, it, like, he doesn't even laugh at him. He just kind of like smirks at him. Like, no, no, I don't care what you built in your basement, buddy. Yeah. You remember like the, they had that whole, like, uh, Night of the Spectre or something. I can't remember what it was called. It was some big crossover event uh, with Shadow Pact and like the Spectre was like gigantic. I think it was part of Final Crisis or Infinite Crisis or yeah. one of them. Uh, if Spectre just started start, start going nuts or whatever and then you have you know, uh, Ray reveals that there's a, uh, you know, a rumored missing page out of Tobin Spirit Guide or some shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's all about the Spectre. Like God's hand of vengeance. I could deal with that all day, yeah, man. I could work with that. I could deal with that all day. And you know what, by the way, I don't feel bad for Peter getting slimed. I mean, especially, you know, that version of Peter, not the animated version of Peter. Mm-hmm. That was probably like a Tuesday night for him. 
Yeah. That dude's like tricking college girls into sleeping with him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some there's some creepy ass behavior there. Like Pete Vankman was probably, you know, just living his best life in a snail trail in some girl's dorm room. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was not pretty. <sighs> he should have been fired. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part is like i thought nothing of it at the time and looking Ooh. at it now i was like oh yeah no he sh- he shouldn't be there he's then, electrocuting one guy even when he's right just to make this girl feel more special so he can sleep with her yeah I, like best case scenario for me head canon wise is he's actually still logging those results because he i i i think he is a uh parapsychologist because he uh at least wants to gather data on the on the topic but and I, don't know, I think that's in the in the film. There, like, there's a healthy mix of skepticism between the scientists, but still, yeah, uh, yeah. The, that behavior in that lab at that time is just oh my god. Looking back on it, it's just hard to watch. Mm-hmm. I like to think that he was running some separate experiment, some separate psychic social experiment. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, if he was running like a reverse pilgrim kind of thing, or a, like a, a second blind pilgrim kind of thing, where it was like, oh, you know, you know, what if. I have the power to make this uh, subject do whatever I want. How, how do you feel about me now? And and logging that, uh, that'd be fine. I don't think so. I think he was just trying to get led. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm pretty sure that's where the he film deserves is. to be. He deserved to be fired. Yeah, he he should have been fired. It's actually one of the fun things about the 2016 film is when they're finally like, "Hey, we could use a raise," and the, the universe is like, "I didn't even know you were here. Get the fuck out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Bye. Holy shit. Why? How did you?" Where were you hiding? And then they ran out <laughs> with all the equipment, and it turns out they've just stolen the equipment. That was actually pretty fun. That, that yeah. Was, that was a good bit. It was. Uh, I think we're out, man. I think we got, we, we, we got done. Cool. Let's call it. All right. Well, you can find every episode at dconscreen.com, theoretically. Mm-hmm. But not really right now. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Still working on that part. All the new ones, yeah. though. All the new ones, yeah. Um. And you can find us on, you know, all the podcatchers. You don't need DC on screen.com right now. Anyway, you can find us everywhere. Um, even the old stuff. They've actually done a really good job of, of, of making the whole backlog available now. Guess a lot of podcasts were annoyed with the whole 300 rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to help support the show financially, patreon.com slash DC on screen. Um, One dollar a month, a month, a month, a month, one dollar a month. <laughs> Gets you uh, every episode ad free. Five dollars a month gets you that plus whatever the hell else we decide to put out there, which you know sometimes isn't a lot. Sometimes you know is an episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll do. Sometimes you get extra stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. And um, if you want to help support us and not pay money, just um, share us, retweet us. Uh, tell your friends, tag your friends in our posts, get them to be like, Hey, check this shit out. These guys are, are awesome or whatever lie you want to tell them to get them here. Naturally. Um, yeah. Uh, or, uh, you know, leaving us a five star rating and review or whatever you think is fair. Yeah. You know, however you want to tell the lie, we're on board. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, uh, until next time, keep some DC on your screen. Bye. Later. Bye. I'm David C. Robertson, and this, the useful whisker, and this, the useful wicker, but I can't do it. I'm David C. <laughs> and this, the careless whisper yeah. of. No, no, no. I'm David C. Robertson, and this, the useful wicker basket who won't help me. God. <laughs> red leather, Sorry. yellow leather, red leather, I yellow leather. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm David C. Robertson, and this. I got to do it all over again. I'm David C. Robertson, and this, the useful wicker basket who won't help my unsuspecting people of Pompeii, Jason Goss. Hey. <laughs> Our intro music is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford. Michael's band, Galactic Engineers of Magnetic Sounds, or GEMS, can be found on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Visit DCOnScreen.com to find our Patreon, merch, contact information, and every episode of the show for free, including crossovers we've done with other podcasts. DC Onscreen is a maladjusted production. For more from me and Jason, including sketch comedy, vlogs, parodies, and our improvised web series Hey Guy, visit maladjusted.tv.